Oh, hey there, guys. Welcome to YGZ Taiwan. Now, as a country, Taiwan has more in common with my country, the United Kingdom, than it does with China. Sounds a little bit strange, doesn't it? But please, let me explain. In terms of language, culture, and traditions, perhaps Taiwan does have more in common with China. But I could even argue that the two countries are pretty far apart in those terms as well. For example, the written language in China has been simplified, and some of the simplified characters are indistinguishable from their traditional form. Even a lot of the traditional culture that has survived in Taiwan has more or less been wiped out by the Communist Party of China, mainly due to their great leap forward and cultural revolution, where so much of the traditional culture was destroyed. And, of course, recently just the general insecurity of the Communist Party of China to be the sole ruler of the country, even if that means wiping out culture and traditions. You see, in my opinion, China is like the watered down version of Taiwan. But anyway, this video is not about that. This is more about how Taiwan has more in common with the UK as a country. So because China has pretty much forced the rest of the world not to recognize Taiwan as a country, I want to demonstrate that Taiwan is definitely a country in its own right and has a lot more in common with my home country than it does with that bully neighbor that lives across the Taiwan Strait. So here is what I think Taiwan and the UK have in common. The first thing is democracy. Taiwan, like the UK, has a democratic election process where leaders are elected by the people. It happens every four years in Taiwan and every five years in the UK. And although we might not always like who our leaders are, no names mentioned, um, uh, Boris Johnson, we the people actually get a say in who leads or screws up our countries. China, on the other hand, well, the people don't really have any say in who runs their country and have just been given corrupt, evil dictators since the founding of the PRC. And now they have Winnie the Pooh as their dictator for life. Yay, Winnie. The next thing in common between the UK and Taiwan is freedom. Freedom of speech, press, religion, and the internet. The Freedom House website puts together an annual global report on political rights and civil liberties, composed of numerical ratings and descriptive texts for each country in a select group of territories. It basically assesses real-world rights enjoyed by individuals in those countries, and it tries to avoid any potential bias that could come from meddling governments. Their website states, Freedom House believes that all people are entitled to freely choose their own leaders from competing political parties, have a government free of corruption, obtain information from a free press, worship and study freely, engage in peaceful assembly and association, benefit from the rule of law and legal equality, and make their own choices about travel, economic engagement, and family life. The set of indicators measured by freedom in the world is derived from the Universal Declaration of Human Rights adopted by the UN General Assembly in 1948. History has shown that despite prejudiced assertions to the contrary, people of all regions and cultures desire these rights and are capable of exercising them responsibly. There's a link in this video's description to their website if you want to explore more and I suggest checking it out, it's very interesting. Freedom House views Taiwan as separate from mainland China because it has its own political system and governs itself freely from the dictatorship of China. It selects territories based on whether the area is governed separately, has different conditions for political rights and civil liberties that are significantly different. Which means a separate assessment is more likely to yield different results. And Taiwan certainly does get some different results than China. And according to the data, seems to have a lot more in common with the UK. So let's see the results. On the Freedom House Global Freedom Score, Taiwan scores an amazing 94. And even got a better score than the UK. Taiwan is more of a free country than the UK? That's amazing. Now, have a look at China's abysmal score. No political rights, no political freedom, no civil liberties, just a totalitarian nightmare of a country. 
Taiwan even scored higher than the UK with freedom of internet. The Taiwanese people enjoy access to everything that the people in the UK can access online, and there is very little censorship. In China, they can only enjoy these freedoms if they are allowed to use a VPN and pretend that they're in another country. Although it is illegal in China and probably a risk to use a VPN, some people do it anyway. Mainly, the government officials and state-run media lackeys who wish to spread their propaganda, or those entitled foreigners who think that China is so great, but think that they are too good to use the Chinese watered-down, censored version of the internet. These selfish foreigners think that they are above the average person in China, who are blocked by the Great Firewall and spoon-fed information from their sick government. The World Press Freedom Index, a database designed to compare different countries' freedom of press, shows that Taiwan has a relatively free press, where the authorities generally respect journalists' rights to report whatever they see fit, with little or no interference from the government. It's the same in the UK. Although this system does come with its shortcomings, at least the people can pick and choose what media they consume and make up their own minds about what is factual and what is not. China, on the other hand, well, we all know that all of their media is state-run. It is pretty much government propaganda for the masses, and the people have no say in what they consume. They can either consume what the CCP wants them to, or don't consume anything at all. The last thing I want to talk about is universal healthcare. Taiwan's healthcare is second to none. Okay, well, apparently it is second to South Korea, but it's still the second best healthcare system in the world. Taiwan offers its citizens universal health coverage, which means that all people have access to the health services they need when and where they need them without financial hardship. Taiwan's national health insurance covers virtually everything from childcare, cancer screenings, mental health, and much, much more. And the costs are low for everyone. As a foreigner in Taiwan, I can even take advantage of this amazing healthcare system. The UK. Has the National Health Service, which operates a little bit different from Taiwan's system. In the UK, all healthcare is free of charge, but we have to pay for dental care and prescriptions. Both systems work well and have served the people of both countries for decades. Taiwan started in 1995, and the UK since 1948. China is a bit different. And doesn't have universal health care. To be fair, some of the bigger cities in China have excellent health care facilities. The only problem is you have to be incredibly rich to be able to have access to such places. The standard of health care service in China is really inconsistent between rural areas and the big cities. I even remember when I lived in China and I used to go to the hospital. It was very rare to even see patients in a private room. You'd be waiting for ages to see a doctor, and you'd be going in the room, and there'd be other people in there listening to all of your problems. Average life expectancy in Taiwan is 81 years old, which is the same as the UK, but in China, it is 76 years old. Which also suggests that medical care in China is not as developed as Taiwan. So, as you can see, Taiwan as a country has a lot more in common with the UK than it does with China, which is why it is extremely important that Taiwan never, never becomes a part of China under the CCP's rule, because all of these freedoms that the people currently have in Taiwan. Will just vanish, and I really, really do not want to see that happen. Well, that's it for another video. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out my Instagram, Twitter, and my Patreon, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.